All right, everyone, this is the gym time movie that I had shot on December 24th, I believe. Um, let me just check. Yeah, December 24th, 2016. We are now April 16th or April 17th. Yeah, Monday, April 17th, Easter Monday. So I wanted to sh do the voiceover for this. Um, so this is basically my workout. I wanted to explain what it is I actually do and why I do it. Now things have changed just a little bit since then. I try to keep repetition. I try to keep consistency. I try to keep progressive resistance, progressive overload over time in a slow, consistent manner. So let's go with this. Okay. So I'm starting off with an angled back extension and I'm using a 25 pound now I'm initiating the movement by contracting my glutes usually when you do a back extension it goes from your hamstrings contract first your gluteus maximus and then your uh, lower back your erector spinae um, when I hold the position on top, I'm making sure that I feel the glutes contracting a lot. So, I keep this movement very controlled. I'm very aware during the whole movement. If my back starts to take up too much of the load, I know it's time to quit. Um, but over a period of time, I've built up a certain number of repetitions. So. I try to keep those repetitions because they're not max repetitions. They're not uh, something out of the blue that I just pulled out of pulled out of the hat. They're actually something that I've been working up to. So I like to at least keep that amount. Sometimes it's harder to do that amount. Sometimes it's easier. When it gets easier, I will add an extra repetition. When it gets harder on the days I'm tired or I've done another exercise before that, or I've been exercising too many consecutive days, um, I will still do the same amount of repetitions. That's how I devised this program for myself that even on my worst days, I can still do it. So I'm maintaining a certain amount of repetitions with a certain overload to keep or to acquire more mass. Um, that's, how I, that's how I do it. So obviously here, this is the third set uh, I built up the three sets. I started with one set. It's really slow and arduous. I'm never sore. I'm just building myself up. This is the second exercise. It's never always in the same order. It depends on what equipment is being used and uh, how my body feels. I'm doing a, a rotator cuff exercise. Now, looking at it here, I don't seem to have that much range of motion. It's a good thing I actually film myself once in a while. This is a this is a arm. I only do it on this arm, on the left arm, because I have not that much of a range of motion. You see, I only did one set, so I built up since then. Hopefully, when I do another film of my gym time, my range of motion will look better. So these are preacher curls. Now the reason I keep everything so consistent and so non-maximal is to be able to just pop in an exercise, pop on the weight I use, and just go at it. That's kind of the key. I don't want to do warm-up sets. I don't want to have to like build up. I want to just get in and out and know that I'm doing something right. Um, and in daily life, it helps me too in the sense that you don't get a chance to warm up if you got to lift something heavy or whatever. So that's kind of how I prepare my body. And it's been working. Initially, with some weights, I'll have uh, pains in my tendons or my elbows. And then over time, I'm able to just go at it without warming up because my tendons have gotten used to it. So it's not a shock. I'm not trying to shock my body. I'm trying to progressively overload it and get stronger. And by that, in this way, this slow, progressively resistive way, get bigger. So I'm on the other side here. You can tell I'm bigger here. 
the bloated stomach. This is before I left for LA. So, um, I'm still on this weight, to, uh, 35 pounds on each side, even now in April. So December, uh, January, February, March, four months, uh, four months ago, or less than four months actually, because we're the 16th, we're not the 30, the 24th, well, just about four months. Um, I'm still on the same weight, but I am pretty close to three sets of 10. So you see how long the process is to get a repetition, the two repetitions to build up. That's how you know you're doing something good. I don't jump in weights. So this is the third set. So as you see on this one, I did do a set of 25 pounds on each side for a warm up. Actually, I still do that now. It's just habit. I could hop into the 35s though. I do that on squats. I hop into my working weight. I hop into my weight with triceps. So it's not a big issue anymore. And you can see the movement is very controlled. I think I'm doing like six repetitions or something. I try not to get lower than six when I change a weight. Now here I am at lunges. I'm doing a warm-up set. So I have improved a lot since this recording time. Because I go into 160 now. Right away for six repetitions. I was doing three sets of 10 with 155. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So, I keep my legs pretty close together, hip width, uh, meaning my pelvis, and my feet straight ahead. Because I'm trying to get the mobility in my calves, trying to get the mobility in my hamstrings, like everything all together. There is a forward bend, it's a little normal. I do believe my position has improved in the past few months. We will have to see with another gym time shoot. I think this is good that I've waited a few months before doing the voiceover for this is because I get to watch this and I think I've done better because I've had calf exercises where I focus on full range of motion and I stretch out my hip flexor on my left side and it's improved. So we will see. Stay tuned for that. So here I am at 135. I think I go up to 155 on this exercise at this time too. Like I said, I'm with exercises for a long time, uh, keeping the same weight for a long time and creeping up one rep at a time without uh, it being extremely difficult. It shouldn't be extremely difficult. It should be the next repetition should just be a little difficult and then you keep at it for a few sessions until it gets e relatively easy and then you add another one and you just go like that progressive like a turtle don't look at anyone around you because they'd be putting on 25 pounds at a time and they'd be blasting up the weights and they'd be doing maximum right reps their uh, what is it RMs or DM whatever or PMs you know um, yeah, personal, personal max or whatever they call it, and it's like, get over yourself. It's not an ego. You just want to build your body up. That's what I want to do. I'm already big, so I ain't got nothing to prove. The fact that it looks like I'm lifting girl weight. I don't see a girl. Okay? So, I don't have anything to prove. I'm just doing things right. That's the whole point. Do things right and progressively overload. It's a lifetime uh, endeavor. Just because you put up weights quickly doesn't mean you're going to get more results from it. Unless your goal is to push the heaviest weight possible. Then, okay, I don't find a use in that. I have a good sense of self. I don't need to be in a clique where people are just lifting heavy weights and trying to outweigh, outlift each other. I have health issues that I'd like to avoid, if that makes sense. No, just have a good working body. 
And that is that. So I am at 155 here. And I'm going lower in the squats now too. So obviously I've warmed up. I can go lower, deeper. I think now, four months later, I can go deep because I'm using a heavier weight to begin with, deeper from the get-go without pains or um, flexibility issues. But I have a lot more to work on, but I've improved a lot, which is what keeps me motivated. It wouldn't keep everyone else motivated. They want to see quick results. I'm, you know, I'm about to slow long-term gains. So here I am doing abs again. I still do my abs like this. I've gone up to, um, I've added an extra two and a half pounds on. So I don't add that much, but I'm a lot stronger. I try to contract, pulling in the abdominals to not let them stick out. At the same time, I'm pulling in, feeling the inner abdominals, the transverse abdominals. I feel my lower back tightening up also, the multifidus. I want to feel all that contracting, and then I feel my obliques kind of cinching in before I go up. And then I kind of keep my hand there to see if there's a bulge coming out. I sometimes still have a little bit of a bulge coming out. I have to really concentrate. And I'll admit, sometimes I kind of slack off on that. It's not every single repetition that I focus on, but the general, general uh, consensus of my repetitions, if that is even good English. So, the average... On the average uh, of my uh, exercises here, I do focus on not having that bulge. But sometimes I do think about just getting the numbers. I do. I'm sorry. So, um, when I brought up to an extra two and a half pounds, which you'll see in the next video that I will be shooting, I, uh, I lowered the repetitions down. I actually only did one set. And then I brought it up to a second set, and slowly I'm bringing it up to a third set. And I'm almost at three sets of 10. I think I'm at 10, 10, and 8. So once I get to 10, 10, 10, then I'm going to bring it up another 2.5 pounds. And just keep working like that. I could bring the angle up higher. I could do so many things to uh, ch change it up. But I'm just about keeping the consistency. So I walk in the gym. I know what I'm doing. Some of the exercises are harder than the others, but I know I only have three sets and I know I can do this many repetitions. And I actually like that structure. And it's been working very well for my body, so I cannot complain. I used to mix it up a lot more. I do mix it up now because I have a, a list of exercises that I rotate. But I have some go-to exercises. If I find something needs a little bit more work, or if I'm weak on one of my go-to exercises, I need to focus on it a little more frequently, get it up, and then I'm good. Um, I keep track of everything in my iPad. I don't use a MyFitnessPal. And I don't actually have a record of when I first start. I have the, no, I don't even have the dates. I just have the list of exercises, and when they change, I just erase it and then kind of write the new one. But my iPad is synced up with my email, so I should have the first email with the exercises and the first weight. So whenever I get the chance, which is not, I'm not in no rush, I can collate all that and see where I was a year from, from now or whatever, you know. Put them in a file. So yeah. But I actually like looking at myself working out to get an idea of what I can do and how I've grown from there. But I have to see a more present video four months later, which is now, as I'm recording the voiceover, to see how I've improved. So I'm doing hammer curls. As you can see, I did preacher curls before, then I went up to do abs, and then I went down to do hammer curls. I work that way. I don't need to do everything in a row. I just mix it up, whatever's free. That's what I like about this structured program is that I know the repetitions I'm doing. 
If I fatigue my muscles with something else before, I'll still be able to do this amount of repetitions because it's, that's how I set it up. I didn't set to do maximum. I set to do, even if I'm tired, I can still do the same repetitions. So that's a good, creating a good base, in my opinion, for anything in my workout. It's not a fluke that I can do these repetitions. I built it up. It's like a runner who was able to do a marathon even though they're tired and they've been working out too much. It's because they already built themselves up, they can do a marathon. That's their base level of fitness. That's how I'm trying to do it with the weight training. And I also do that with my cardio too. So I think I'm using um, 35 pounds maybe, I think, because I'm at 40 pounds now. I've been at it for a while. It looks like 35, so it looks kind of thick. So, um, let's start with 30s. I, I've done heavier, a lot heavier on these things, but like I said, it's about stimulating the muscles. I haven't said that in this video, but I'm saying it now. It's about stimulating the muscles, but maintaining a certain base and progressively overloading and uh, increasing slowly as as necessary but not going overboard because you have to be able to do the same thing each time you work out plus one if you drop in repetitions and you're really tired and sore from a previous workout on the same muscle group then you jump too high and you need to like cut back so here I am. This is the third. Oh uh, yeah, this is where someone came up to me and asked me. Uh, it's not in the video, but those guys doing the dumbbell presses with the guy sitting next to the guy doing the dumbbell press. He came up to me and said, "Are you filming? You're filming me. You're not allowed to film me and all that." So I'm not filming you. Um, his back is towards me there. You know, his parents are not gonna find out. <laughs> you don't see who it is. Get over it. But it, it technically is. It, it's a public place, but it's not a public public place. It's a gym. So, um, whatever. So, going on to the next exercise. This should be a front raise. Yeah, with 15 pounds or 20 pounds. I do those too. I also do behind the neck presses. This exercise used to hurt me so much on the left shoulder. Uh, my left side is still weak, but I'm realizing now I, I'm able to pinpoint that it's my rhomboids that are tight, uh, that are weak. And I have a, on my left side, I have a, more of a rounded shoulder posture than I do on the left, on the right side. So just now, just thinking about it, keeping it pulled back and keeping those muscles around the shoulder strong and I've, I've improved, um, though it is a definite weakness still, but I've gotten stronger. Like when I do pull-ups and those front raises and even these reverse fry, flies that you see here, I have to focus more on the left side pulling with the rhomboids so there's no pinching in the shoulder joint. Like now there's a little bit of tightness, but it's still to be worked on, but it has improved. I haven't been decapacitated. Uh, incapacitated yet. Now to film this, this is so funny because I put it on the garbage pail next to the water fountain so that's why there's a lot of people walking by. I didn't bring it on this tripod. I have a tripod now. Maybe I could bring it in. It does shrink because right now it's on the, ta on the counter table. Like people use those gorilla tripods which is kind of cool also. I guess you could wrap it around things. That might be a next investment, but for now, if I bring this camera in, it's going to be quite conspicuous, it's going to be on a tripod. But hey, do it when there's not a lot of people, get my stuff done, and uh, yeah, at least my arms look big, I like that, in that shirt of course. I was 10 pounds heavier, this is before going to LA, um, I'll have to see what I look like in the next video. This is really good. I'm really liking this. These are tricep presses, of course. Documenting my workouts. If anything to upload, not for anyone else, but just for myself, to have an idea of what I'm doing. 
If any of you can relate, let me know. So again, very controlled. This is my working weight. I think this was 65. I'm at 75 now, four months later. So initially when I start the exercise, usually you know the first set is a warm-up and stuff. Like I said, I wanted to be able to jump into my weights. No warm-up. That's how you know you're improving. Your tendons and ligaments are be have become stronger that you can just go into it. That comes with a lot of dedicated, slow, uh, progressive training. And initially when I start at a new weight with this exercise, my elbow on my left side hurts. And then the second set, it's okay because it's warmed up. There's a little cracking at the, the first one. But then after a while, several weeks, maybe even several months of doing it, uh, it strengthens up. And that's how I know I'm getting stronger. It's not rocket science, it's just you have to be very patient and very dedicated and very consistent, but also know when to take time off and let your body heal. Sometimes I, I, I get, like today I'm doing the voiceover because I purposely took today off. And so when I go to the gym tomorrow, I've been rested and some weights will, uh, some of my exercises will go up. And so I'll bring it up a repetition. That's all I do. And then I keep going and then I start to get tired as the week goes on. And maybe I'll push it, I'll go even though I'm tired, and then I'll just maintain the repetitions that I have on my iPad. You know, feeling proud that I was still able to do it even though I was tired. And then I'll take a day or two off and come back and feel strong again and then go up in the rep. That cycle, re repeated year after year. Uh, this has only been not even a year of doing it this way, I think. I've been doing it this way with the cardio for uh, almost two years in May. So I think that's what made me want to bring it to the, uh, the weight training. And I'm really impressed with my results. And uh, I'm still able to maintain my 10 pounds loss since coming back from LA. Um, we'll see how it looks like on camera. I'll have to shoot another video. So. So these are overhead tricep presses, of course, or tricep extensions. Again, I used to have a problem with my left arm bringing my shoulder up and being able to push uh, without my shoulder pinching up or whatever because my serratus anterior didn't fire that much and I was losing flexibility. I still have that imbalance, but it is better and manageable now. That's all I can ask for, that I'm going in the right direction. As you can see, Okay, my back may be a bit arched, but not overly arched. I try to keep it as flat as, as I can, and I try to keep the arch in the upper back, whereas a lot of people who do this exercise, they arch, they stick their butt out and they arch their lower back because when they lift their arm above their head, their lats are so tight that they can't without arching their back. So it's a flexibility thing. So here's some shoulder shrugs. I still do these now. I don't do them as often, especially when I go to the gym and I don't have time. This is like an exercise that I will go to when I have time and I'm caught up and I need to do accessory work. Just like this, the pullovers, I do less of them now, but I still do them. They're in my routine, but if I'm tired or if I'm missing days and I need to catch up the bigger muscles, I will do the other muscles, the major exercises, which I have gotten better on. And these exercises, I don't need as much, but I still keep them because they're important to keep, to maintain at least. Uh, maybe eventually if, when I'm caught up, I'll focus more on those a little bit more for the time being. You know, it's all a rotation, but I have my certain amount of exercises that I'm progressing in. And eventually I want to add a few. There's a few that I'd like to add. In due time. I'm doing good right now with what I have. So I think I move up to 45. These are 40s. And I had my left shoulder that was always the problem. It was always pinching. I have to make sure that I lower my shoulder down and make sure that the shoulder blade is pressed against the, the bench. Even 
with that, though, my arms are going almost to ear level. So it's not sad looking at this, but I'd like my flexibility to be better. I am doing this for flexibility too, range of motion, especially in the left shoulder. So, and now I'm off to the cardio. So that was a pretty long workout. My workouts are less long now because the cardio has been cut since I uh, went to LA. I do running, I do stair master, and I do the cross trainer on the days that my feet are too sore from running and cross training, uh, and stair climbing. Whereas at this time I was doing more cardio, burning more calories, and now I just don't need it. And everything's kind of shorter in general. But to the point, I'm still good, um, and I'm still motivated. I just don't need all that. And you can hear the clanging of my lens camera on the camera trying to film this as I'm stretching my hip flexors. Uh, whereas now I stretch it on the, against the wall on the floor. I stretch the left one only and it's improved. My knee still kind of grinds a bit but less and I feel when I do my squats that I actually feel my left quad contracting and I feel that it's getting stronger and I bring my grapes. I don't bring grapes anymore. Sometimes I, I just go to the gym, if I go earlier, I don't even eat. So it depends. I think sometimes with me and my eating, um, and I mentioned it in a vlog on another channel that I have, a little self-help channel, um, that sometimes it's just habits. Like you get into a habit of eating, thinking that you need that. And sometimes I have to realize when I get too anxious, and I eat, or I don't want to like get hypoglycemic, so I bring the food with me. So, so I am running here. Okay, yeah, I was running. Now my running is like I'm at ten and a half minutes of running with nine and a half minutes of warm up. So it's still twenty minutes. I just eventually will bring the running to the point that I start off running for twenty minutes. Whereas I used to do ten minutes of running. See, I'm at 10 minutes there. Uh, oh no, I'm on the cross trainer, I'm sorry. To continue doing another 489 calories. Like I said, I don't do that anymore. I do on days, separate days, when I feel I need to uh, let my feet rest. But with the running, I keep it at 20 minutes. I initially did 10 minutes of running, and then one minute of, no, 10 minutes of walking, and then I built up to 10 minutes of running. Initially, it was one minute, then one and a half minutes, and then, so anyways, it's 20 minutes, running at 5.5, and I'm keeping the 20 minutes, and then uh, my next stage will be, I'm at nine and a half minutes of walking, and ten and a half minutes of running, next will be nine and a quarter minutes of walking, and ten minutes and 45 seconds of running, so always increase my running by 15 minutes, and decrease my warm my walking warm up by 15 minutes so eventually the whole 20 minutes will be running that will be my warm up and then from there I can move up the speed so there's ways to structure uh, improvements constant improvements as your body gets used to it so I am almost done with the cardio I am done because I'm taking my stuff off I'm not wiping off the machine because I am done with it. I wiped it before sleep, and that's it. So I hope you learned uh, something in this video, or I hope it inspired you, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.